after all the different films and different roles that you've done, uh, Robert, would you now say that you have an approach, or is it horses for courses? I think it's, you know, each, each uh, problem is individual. I know that it really doesn't matter from whether you spend a lot of time trying to prepare in a certain way, unless it really, you know, works for you. My way is to not worry about things until I'm, I mean, I know what I have to do when I'm there, but I think it is a way of conserving energy, only using the energy when, when it's necessary. And I think that's from just doing it so much. I know what's really important and what's not. Some are harder. Some parts were harder but more rewarding in a certain way. Say, okay, we're at Raging Bull. That's what I mean about conserving energy. You can conserve the energy to the moment that you have to do it, and then you do it, and then it's draining, maybe, but it's also satisfying. The thing with movies is, you know, there's so much waiting, and you're getting to the moment, that the moment isn't usually the time when you think it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> you're all ready, but they're not ready, yeah. <laughs> you know. So you got to... Can you, you switch off? I mean, do you find that they... They take you over in any in any marked degree. If you're playing well, uh, Max Cady, are you that much more <laughs> difficult well, to be with outside uh, off the set? Well, sometimes what might happen uh, is that if you're in a certain rhythm as an actor and, and uh, playing a certain part, a character, you might at the end of the day, if you're very hyped up and always doing one, you might it might carry over to the dinner that night. <laughs> Tell me what you feel about improvisation. I mean, I've noticed on this one that unless. Uh, you're invited to, in which case you're very yeah. open to it. That you 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 know very good about sticking, com you know absolutely to what's to what's written. I, for me, I, this this piece is that kind of thing. It it it, it uh, demands that kind of uh, discipline because you don't want to get into being too contemporary, and you have to watch out every move that you make, every word. If it's the right word, you can do it. It's sometimes you had a word here and there, but you have to sort of stick to the. So it's not an absolutely given thing that you would consider <coughs> that, you know, improvisation was absolutely the norm. When you improvise, uh, even if you do a uh, something that might appear to be improvised, it'll be improvised slightly. It'll be ad-libs and stuff like that, but actually it's been worked out before. Did you always know you wanted to go into movies, though? I mean, was that... Well, I, yeah, when I was younger, I wanted to be an actor, and then I, I was 10, and then when I was 15, I decided I wanted to do it again. I went when I was 16 to acting school for a while, stopped for about six months, and then went back when I was 18. Tell me who were your earliest influences were, either as you, you talked about wanting to be a director from late teen, were directors or films or actors that really struck a chord with you? I was, I was thinking, actually, uh, some earlier, uh, actually, English films, were like uh, the Carol Rice film, Saturday Night, Sunday Morning, mm -hmm. was... Um, Albert Finney, there was The Sporting Life with uh, Richard, Harris. Richard Harris. Those films, I remember, they were okay. considered, a, a, when I was a kid, like, there were art films in America, yes. you know. Yes. Uh, and were not as mainstream as European films are becoming more today, I think, certain mm -hmm. films. In America, the actors that I always tell everybody about that I, that I thought were the, the most interesting, were um, James Dean, Brando, uh, Montgomery Clift, Kim Stanley, and um, Greta Garbo. Really? Uh, why why Garbo? Why? Well, I saw, hadn't seen a movie of hers until I was like in my 30s or late 30s. And she was uh, great. You know, if you Bre could have played one of the parts that they played or one of the, one of the performances, one of those, which would it be? Um, well, I see, I couldn't do, in other words, when you saw James Dean do. East of Eden, he was great, but you can't do what he could do. You know, Brando on the Waterfront or Streetcar Named Desire, those are the considered the great performances at that time and still are, you know, when you were going to acting school. And, um, Have you on the whole worked with what you might call actors, directors, or are they the ones you prefer, the ones that have a particular interest in acting and, uh, rather than, than, you know, the kind of... Well, I've worked with um, many directors, especially more modern directors, um, didn't know much about acting, but what they did have was just a very acute sensitivity to people, and not only actors, and so that they would respect anything that they did. They had a certain, um, um, uh, you know, like Scorsese has a very deep respect for people, actors, in terms of, you know, he always, uh, it's like very sacred to him, you know, he's very, so that's, that's important. I'm fortunate to have someone that I want to always work with and that we, when we do get together, we, we come up with something um, 
whatever it'll be, that at least I feel it's always special, you know. You've worked with many different directors and you've yeah. also worked with someone like Martin Scorsese right. many times. So what do you look for in a, in a director or what do you particularly admire in your experience on well, I think a director has to have uh, has to have a, a very keen sensitivity to um, uh, to the actors or who whoever it is. I mean, a non-actor, actor, whatever. The people, all people, the crew, everybody. You know, have to have like a real sensitivity to to what's going on and to create a good feeling. It's important. And uh, you've gone out of your way. You've worked with a lot of, to, or not out of your way, perhaps just the way it's gone to work with a lot of different directors, European directors, British d directors, and. Uh, 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 obviously a lot of American directors. Uh, w was that deliberate? Well, I think Americans direct differently. They have a, another sense of, <laughs> I guess what they focus on, a certain truth or a naturalism. Some directors like to rehearse. I, I mean, like with Scorsese, we've worked different ways and different, sometimes I, we, we videotape certain scenes, we rehearse them, we improvise and we f fool around with them to see if we can get anything else, else out of the scene. Bertolucci, he worked a certain other way. It was more, and he has a very sort of florid camera style and so on. You have to follow that. It was harder for me to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sergio Leone, on the other hand, I'd sometimes say to him, well, show me how you do it. Mm -hmm. And you could get it. You could get the moment. You could get the language in a very organic way from, mm -hmm. from that director. And I said, I, I got it. It's not like you're not giving me the performance, but I got, I got the... I got a way to do it. I see the way you did it. Now I, I can do it. Why, at this stage, did you decide to direct a picture? Was it because the particular subject matter, or because you'd had a yearning to direct? Uh, well, I always wanted to direct a yeah. movie. I've always, since I was um, in my late teens, early twenties, yeah. and I just never got around to it. I finally started realizing as I was getting older, by the, you know, my early forties, that I better really do it. It's either now or. I'm never going to do it. What were the elements of the directing process that surprised you? Because obviously you'd seen a lot first time with all the amazing, you know, collection of directors you worked with. What were the things that actually surprised you? Uh, well, what, what I know in a movie is that uh, through my experience uh, just as an actor is that it always works out. <laughs> it, it, it'll work out. It looks like it's not going to work out. It's like craziness all around, you know. Yeah, and yeah. All of a sudden it just yeah. comes together. And things that you might think will not work and even when you're looking at them being shot, will actually work once you look at them in the editing room yeah. and you get a little distance from them. And they might work much better than you even imagine. So you have to trust all that. What pressure did you feel about being in the picture as well, about acting in it as well? How did well, I guess it was something that I had committed to, and I said there's not much I can do about it, so I just got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. you know? I felt that my, the part that I was playing in Bronx Tale was enough of a part, a small enough part, that it wouldn't tax me too much if there were were any difficulties I can handle it when the pressure is on the the money people start slowly coming in like this <laughs> and you start thinking you know <laughs> you could I mean I could see where some directors would get into a situation you have to be very very strong where they get into a situation where they'll, the people around them will just walk all over them the, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the money people controlling it if, if they think they can smell an opening Mm -hmm. It's like an, an animal thing almost, and you really have to keep them at bay. What do you look for in a role? Is it, is it uh, that you'd have like an interesting... It's very hard to find a good part that also complements a story and vice versa. A good character, you know, that has some depth and so on. Do you find, I mean, for instance, that you look for things that uh, are different from, from anything you've done before? Do you find I that... I try to. Sometimes they overlap. I mean, like, uh, you know, I'm, uh, sometimes you do something within the same... I mean, what we're doing is totally different from what I've ever done. Did you know, uh, had you images or memories of the, the early, the Boris Karloff films of Frankenstein? Did any of that make you think, oh, you know, I don't want to be... You well, know. you always have that thing. I looked at those and I, I felt that they were just so different in a way that they mm -hmm. had nothing to do with what I saw was there, what I saw in the script and the whole approach was going to be different. So, mm -hmm. though I looked at them, I don't... I looked at them after I decided I was going to do it. Here was something where, in order to create something um, that, that, w that, that frightens the rest of the people in yeah. the story, was going to involve a great deal of makeup and maybe, you know, in some sense, masking what is your stock in trade. Did that make you nervous or...? or no, I, 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 you know, I don't know what people are going to say even now about that. Some people asked me the other day, is there so much makeup that you're totally disguised or whatever because there's a fine line of people recognizing who it is 
uh, say in my case, but at the same time having enough of, of a distortion, uh, it's also another style. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a, 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 like you were saying, not naturalistic. It can't be too contemporary, mm. with, you mm. know. Yeah. But as we both agreed, it shouldn't be too sort of arch or archaic yeah, or anything. Be, yeah, there's a fine yeah. line that you walk. Oh, schlocky, we didn't want it to be that. And we've been going, you know, doing mm. that. And how do you find the long. actual process of wearing it, putting it on? As we know, it's a very time-consuming thing, and you've been very patient about it all. But, I mean, how, how do you find working in it, staying in it for long periods, and, and still... The big pain know. in the ass. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. No, actually, it's uh, okay. Um, we... We had some very long days, um, and then we've shortened it down from 12 hours for the body makeup, seven and a half, say, for, we were doing it for a while, and then now we're down to four and a half. But that's what it is. That's yeah. the nature of the piece. The future. Well, I mean, any specific ambitions do you want to direct more? Are there any particular kind of role or something that you haven't done that you think I'd really... Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to direct again. I mean, I ideally would like to write my own thing. I'm writing something with Chaz Palmateri now. We're going to do that hopefully um, as soon as it's ready now I'm doing a movie called Casino with Marty Scorsese that's about certain types of people that we've done before but they're, they're still different at the same time the story is different the locale is different the whole thing uh, what I like is if somebody says uh, I never thought of you for this type of part but then I but then I thought yeah you would be good for it just for that very reason and it would yeah. spark something in me that makes it different. You know, mm -hmm. you and I were even talking a little bit about mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. mentioning some things uh, that that sometimes you need that from an outside source in order to stimulate you and get you s inspired almost or revved up about doing something different. Well, whatever it is, whether it's from outside sources or from yourself, the world will be watching and waiting. And uh, while I have the chance to say it, on behalf of all of them, someone who's particularly privileged and proud to done a picture with you, Rob De Niro. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call a wrap-up, Robert. Yeah, that's it. Just throw it off the top of my head. Very there, good.